What's going on out there everybody and welcome to Eddie Studios. For those who are new to my channel, I do weekly videos with tips and tricks to help you be a better videographer. We also cover some different equipment that we use in cameras and today we're going to go over the DJI Osmo Pocket 2's settings. I want to go over the settings on the camera itself as well as bring in the Mimo app and go over the settings on your phone app. Now you do need the Mimo app if you're going to do any updates, which coincidentally enough I didn't update on this today. so. At the very end, I'm going to talk about the newest update and what it adds to this camera. So if you stick around to the end, you'll hear about the newest update on this camera. Now, you might be wondering, hey, Eddie, what happened to your nose there? It's not as noticeable today. It's been about, what, a week? Um, New Year's Eve, we were at a little indoor music park, and this happened. Out of my face! <laughs> Yeah, so my kids were able to capture that actually using this camera, and we had a lot of laughs out of it. <laughs> Thought I'd show off going down face first, but it didn't really work out in my favor. It was fun. But we had a good New Year's. I hope you guys all did as well. But if you think you can get some use out of my channel and some of the content that I put out, you might as well hit that subscription button now. And don't forget to hit the bell notification, because then you'll get notified when I drop my weekly videos. Let's get right in to the on-camera settings on the DJI Osmo Pocket 2. So when you turn on your Osmo Pocket 2, you have your main menu. To, if you swipe to the right, you've got all the videos you previously shot. If you swipe to the right again, you have your option to heart those videos, which helps you when you're editing so that you know which ones you like the most, or you can just delete them right there. Let's swipe back over, and we're back at the main screen. And from the main screen, if you swipe left, then you have your different video photo options. You have... Um, pano, um, when you're in video, for instance, you swipe again to the left and then you can pick your resolution and your um, frames per second. If you come back, we're going to have to swipe again and we go to photo, we swipe to the left again and then we have all those extra options. Just remember, if you think there's supposed to be extra options for something once you've selected it, try swiping again in the direction you had originally swiped from and those will open up the extra options that you may or may not have with that function. So um, I'm going to get back to video, then we'll go back out here, and if you swipe down from the top, it gives you your other menu settings. So we've got regular settings here. It's going to give you options like uh, calibrating your gimbal, for instance, if you swipe over um, the key tone on or off while you push buttons and stuff. There's more. Um, just explore that a bit. So we'll go back. Let's get back into this. And so swiping over from here, we've got, this is a glamour effect, which I never will use. Um, some people may use it. This is the quality of the video. So we got it in high quality right now, but if I hit it again, it'll be battery saver. So I like high quality, click in high quality. And we got pro mode. Like I said in my last video, you want to use pro mode no matter what. And this is going to be the linked microphone. Currently, I don't have it hooked up, but it would link right here and show all that uh, information for the microphone there. Swiping down, then we're swipe up from the bottom. This gives you your follow modes, flipping the camera around, recenter is the top one over here, and then your follow speed down here. I like to keep that in fast just because I like to move my camera fast and sometimes and I like it to follow when I do it. Um, so that's the basic settings on your camera itself. Keep in mind some things have changed since this newest update that I'd like to kind of talk about, but we'll skip that till the end and then I'll just kind of cover it. So let's get right into the Mimo app and we'll do that now. I'm using a screen record on my camera right now. We're going to see if it works out. Um, sometimes when you're using a different um, method of recording, it doesn't want to do both. So we're using that on my cell phone. Right now I'm trying to connect. All right, so we're currently connected to the device and we'll start off to the left. Home's going to take you back to your home menu um, where you're not connected to the camera anymore and it's more the DJI information stuff. Then manual settings is going to give you your different ISO, your shutter speed, and then it'll show you what your um, exposure setting at. Next down we've got our resolution. The resolution is going to be set at 4K right now for me and 30 FPS on high quality. So some of the similar settings they're just in a different location. So we've got glamour effect is disabled and it is only available for certain resolutions which I'm fine with because I'm not going to be using that. And then down here we've got our extra video stuff. So right now we got pro modes turned on as you can see. I've got my grid lines on because I like having that on. 
Yeah, uh, focuses continual auto continual autofocus, or you can have single autofocus, um, where you could just select a specific thing for it to focus on, and then it won't hunt around for new things. White balance is custom. My colors uh, decenter like channel stereo. You know, you got all this stuff. So it's a little bit easier to view on here than it is to view on your device. You go here. We got gimbal easy control gimbal. Auto calibration down at the bottom. We've got the general setting stuff. So formatting your SD card, how much memory you have left, all of that. So you can see all of that. So let's get back out into the main screen here. We've got our gimbal controls to the bottom right corner. So that allows you to control the gimbal. And right now I just have it sitting on the desk and I'm controlling it with that. You also see your ISO, your frame rate and all that business down at the bottom. To your right on the top, you've got where you flip around your camera, then you've got your recenter, and then you have your follow modes. At the bottom is where you would view your videos, so that would be like your gallery. Then to your right, you've got your different video options. You can live stream straight from this app. I've done it to Facebook and it's done, worked out really well for me. You can do your photos, you got your video, you got panorama. You've got your HDR video, slow-mo, time-lapse, hyperlapse, all of that. Now, when you plug into the app, it will add the extra story mode in here, which gives you the options for it to kind of have preset camera movements for you. I do recommend playing with it. It's kind of fun. It's something you can definitely use for Instagram Reels or TikTok videos if you want to play with that. I'm currently not plugged into the device and I'm connected wirelessly but it does add that extra setting. And I did notice that with the newest update, it added that extra setting directly on the camera, but I'm gonna have to play with it more before I can explain it better to you guys. All right, I hope you guys got some use out of that little tour around the settings and kind of the setup of your Osmo Pocket 2. If you did get use out of it, please hit that like button, show me some love on this video, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you see the new videos that I'm putting out weekly to help you be a better videographer. Now, I do want to touch base on that newest update that happened with the Osmo Pocket 2. In my last video, I talked about the, the quick turn on for it being this button to the right of your power button being a quick turn on. Well, they've now made that kind of an automatic turn on, which is the turn on to aim it forward. And the original power on is now to aim it back at you. So they've... they've kind of corrected me on that and have made a new update that kind of makes that my little tip on that a little obsolete. So now if you use the normal original power on, it only it's going to face it back at you and not turn back around. And then if I'm going to turn it off, that is the only turn off though. So that's the power off. The original power on is the only power off. Now the button to the right of your record button is now the turn on that aims it forward. <laughs> so they've made that change it was it was something cool to know but now now they've kind of changed changed it around on me so the next thing is they've added hdr video which i have yet to play with yet because i think your best application for that's going to be a sunny day if you have to aim it towards the sun in any manner it's going to even out some of those blown out areas now that is only in 1080 or 2.7k mind you on social media people do not notice 4k so Feel free to shoot in 1080 or 2.7 and play with that HDR video. I myself like to shoot in the decent like profile and then do my own color grading, but I will play with the HDR and kind of give you guys some feedback on that. It also added the story mode on the camera. Again, I have not played with that yet. I will play with that and I will let you know how it works out. The story mode that is on the app is really easy to understand and play with. So. If you just plug your phone into it, get on the app, it's going to be your top option or second from the top option of your different uh, camera modes. So, and then play with the story mode. What it does is it has pre-movements of the gimbal itself. So then you, you like aim it at an object, do a pre-movement, then you aim it at a different object, does another movement. My daughter actually used it when we did our first opening box, our unboxing video of this. She used it on her video because we did like a little competition. I'll throw that up in a card there. The, so the video there, her version of her use of this camera was using that story mode, which is now available on the camera with the update. It wasn't available before. And again, I'm going to have to play with it to see exactly what it's about 
on here and how it differs from the version of it on the app. The other thing that it added, which I did notice this is a little weird, it now on camera, on the camera, on the gimbal itself, allows you to take the ISO up to 6400. Before it was 1600. Now, when I plug my phone into it after the update, it still only lets me go to 1600 on my phone. I do not know why that is, but it lets me go to 1600 on my phone and 6400 if I'm doing it just on here. Now, I will do a noise test of that ISO and I'll pop those up right here to see what the noise is like on it. All right, we're at 3200 ISO and I am curious about the noise. So I'm gonna load this on my computer. We're gonna check out the noise. Remember a 3200 ISO for this shot. I'm gonna crank it up again. And we're gonna see what 6400 looks like all right, I'm at 6,400 ISO, and my exposure is showing that I'm at like a plus one, which is great. Um, it looks good on the Osimo Pocket, but we're going to put it on the computer and see what kind of noise we're getting in the 6,400 ISO. This could be a game changer with this new update, being able to get this 6,400 ISO in 4K video. Like, I'm only lit lighting this room with this one desk light. That's it. Okay, so maybe that was really noisy. I haven't actually looked at it yet, but I'm not sure. I did 3200, 6400 to seeing how noisy those images are. They could come in really handy for low light situations. Cool updates. I'm sure I'm missing something. I know it did some bug fixes on the microphone, um, the do it all handle. There were some bug fixes. I hope you guys got a lot of use out of this video. It's going to be probably one of my last videos directly about the Osmo Pocket 2 in a while, unless I get a lot of comments that are asking specific questions, then I'll put out another video. Otherwise, I'm going to be using this for B-roll and stuff like that along the way. Um, next week, my video is going to be about in-camera transitions and how to make your video fun and energetic using those in-camera transitions and when and how to use them. So until next week, I'm going to keep grinding here at Eddie Studios, and I'll see you guys around.